AI offers boundless potential from enhancing healthcare diagnosis to making um, our city smarter, empowering us with education. The potential is immense. While AI can revolutionize so much, realizing this potential also rests on our ability to solve some uh, really important technical and societal uh, challenges. So I would like to talk with you about um, a new idea for machine learning we termed uh, liquid networks. We uh, began to develop this work as a way of uh, addressing some of the uh, challenges that we have with today's AI solutions. Because despite the great opportunities, we also have plenty of technical challenges that remain to be solved. Um, so first among the AI challenges is the data itself. We require huge amounts of data uh, that gets fed in immense models. Um, and these models have a huge computational and environmental cost. We also have an issue with data quality because if the data quality is not high, the performance of the model will not be good. Bad data means bad performance. Uh, furthermore, um, we have these black box systems where it's really impossible to find out how the system makes decisions. And this is really problematic, especially for safety critical applications. Um, so let me show you the essential idea behind uh, liquid AI. And I will show this to you in the context of an um, autonomous driving application and then we can generalize to others. Um, so here is a, um, a self-driving car, uh, which was built by our students at MIT uh, using uh, traditional deep neural networks. And it, it does pretty well. It was trained in the city. It, um, it uh, drives really well in a completely different environment. It can make uh, decisions at intersections. It can recognize the goal. So it's pretty good, right? But let me open uh, the hood to show you uh, how this vehicle makes decisions. So um, you will see in the uh, right-hand corner the map. Uh, you will see in the upper left corner the camera input stream. And the decision-making engine is the big rectangular box in the, uh, in the middle with blue and yellow blinking lights. And um, there are about 100,000 artificial neurons uh, that are working together to tell this car what to do. And it is absolutely impossible to correlate how the neurons um, activate with what the vehicle does, because there are too many of them. There's also half a million parameters. Take a look at the lower uh, left-hand corner uh, where we see the attention map. This is where, in the image, the vehicle looks in order to make decisions. You see how noisy it is? You see how this vehicle is looking at the bushes and at the trees on the side of the road? So this is a bit of a problem, right? Well, I would like to um, do better. I would like a vehicle um, uh, whose decisions I can understand. And in fact, with liquid, liquid networks, um, uh, we have a new class of models. Um, and uh, here you can see the liquid network solution for the same problem. Now you will see the entire model consisting of 19 um, artificial neurons, liquid neurons. And look at the attention map. Look how clean it is and how focused it is on the road horizon and on the sides of the road, which is how I drive. Um, and so um, liquid networks seem to understand their task better than deep networks. And because they are so compact, they have many other uh, properties. So in particular, we can take the output of 19 neurons and turn them into a um, decision tree uh, that could show the humans how these networks decide. And so um, they are much closer to a world where we can have machine learning that is understandable. We can apply liquid networks to many other applications. Here is the solution, a solution consisting of 11 neurons. And um, this is driving a plane uh, in a canyon of unknown geometry. The plane has to hit these points at unknown locations. And it's really extraordinary that all you need is 11 uh, artificial neurons, liquid network neurons, in order to solve this problem. So how did we accomplish this? Um, well, um, we started by the continuous time neural network framework. And um, the, in continuous networks, the, net, um, the solution or the, the neuron is defined by a series of differential equations. 
And these models are kind of temporal neural network, which includes um, standard recurrent neural networks, also neural ODEs, continuous, continuous time CDRNNs, and now uh, liquid networks. And it's really extraordinary because by using differential equations um, and by using continuous time networks, we can model very elegantly complex problems like problems that involve physical dynamics. Uh, for instance, in this case, we have the half cheetah standard and it can be modeled elegantly with these continuous time uh, networks. However, uh, when you take a, um, an existing continuous time solution and you model even a simple problem like can you get this half cheetah to walk, um, you actually get performance that is not that much better uh, than a standard LSTM. And so, um, however, with liquid networks, you can do better. Okay, so how do we achieve this um, better performance? Well, we achieve it with two mathematical innovations. Um, first of all, we change the uh, equation that defines the activity of the neuron. Uh, we start with a linear state space model, um, and then we introduce nonlinearities uh, over the synaptic connections, and then when we plug these two equations uh, into each other, we end up with this equation. And so what's interesting about this equation is that the um, the time constant that should go in front of x of t is actually dependent on x of t. And this allows us to have um, a neural network solutions that are able to change their underlying equations based on the input that they see after training. Uh, we also do some other um, changes like we change um, the, the wiring architecture of uh, the network, and you can read about this in our papers. And so now let's go back to the attention of a whole suite of networks, CNNs, CTRNNs, LSTMs, and other solutions. So back to the uh, driving in lane problem, you see that all previous solutions um, are really looking at the context, not at the actual uh, task. And uh, in fact, um, we have a mathematical basis for this result. Uh, we can actually prove that uh, our uh, liquid network solutions are causal. Um, in other words, they connect cause and effect uh, in ways that are consistent uh, with the mathematical definitions of causality. Now, uh, I promised you a fast solution, but these networks are defined by differential equations. Um, so you might ask, do they really need um, numerical problem solvers? Uh, because that would actually be a huge computational hit. Well, it turns out we have a closed form solution um, for the hairy equ equation that goes inside the neuron. And the solution has a good bound. It's good enough. Um, and you can see in this chart uh, in, um, in red the uh, ODE solution and in uh, blue the solution um, uh, with our approximation. And you see that they are, uh, they are really um, uh, quite close to each other. Um, so new, these liquid networks uh, can learn causal relationships because they form uh, causal models. Um, unlike other models defined by differential equations like neural ODEs and CTRNNs, in, in essence, these networks recognize when their outputs are being changed uh, by certain interventions. And then they learn how to correlate cause and effect. All right, so let me give you um, a final example uh, to convince you that uh, these networks are really valuable. So here we have a different problem. We are training a drone how to fly in the woods. Notice that it's summertime. Okay, so we give, um, uh, we give our drones examples of videos like you see in this, um, uh, in this example. And these are not uh, uh, annotated in any way. And we train a variety of models, for instance, a standard deep neural network. And now when we get um, the standard network trained uh, in that environment to find uh, the object and go to it, um, you see that um, the model has a lot of trouble. The attention um, is very noisy. And uh, then also notice that the background is different because now it's fall time. So the context uh, of the task has changed. Because deep networks are so uh, dependent on context, they don't do so well. But look at our liquid network solution. Um, they are so focused on the task. And um, the drone has no problem uh, finding the object. We can further um, go all the way to the winter with the same model trained in the summer. And uh, we get a good solution. And finally, uh, we can 
even change uh, the context of the task entirely. We can put it uh, in, a, in an urban environment and we can go from a static object to a dynamic object, the same model trained in the summer in the woods uh, does well in this uh, example. So this is again because we have a provably causal solution. So um, liquid networks are a new model for machine learning. They're compact, interpretable, and causal, and they have uh, shown great promise uh, in generalization under heavy uh, distribution shifts. Thank you.